The Science of Learning Research Center presents Psychology, Education, Neuroscience, P.E.M. Pen Principle, number 11. Find the story behind the facts. What if I told you that scientists long believed the human brain was fixed, and that Paul Bakke Rita was one of the first people to champion the idea that the human brain was actually malleable? You might be thinking to yourself, so what? Those are some interesting facts, but I'm probably going to forget them by tomorrow. But what if instead I told you that when Paul Bakke Rita was 24, his father suffered from a severe stroke which left him completely paralyzed on the left side of his body, and that the doctors at the time told him he'd never again regain motor function because the human brain simply can't change. But Paul's brother George refused to believe the doctors. For hours a day, George worked with his father, helping him move his, his affected limbs, and after years of diligent practice, the thing many physicians said was impossible actually happened. Paul's dad regained full motor recovery, full function of his affected limbs, and he was able to return to work. And it was from that incident, from watching his dad suffer and then recover from stroke, that Paul decided to go against the prevailing dogma of his day and champion the theory of neuroplasticity. Now, you might be thinking a bit differently. Now you might feel engaged, inspired, pulled in. And that's the power of finding the story behind the facts. When individuals listen to facts weaved into a coherent story, they're able to simulate the experiences they are listening to. In fact, neuroscientists have demonstrated that while listening to a story as opposed to isolated facts, areas of the brain correlated with physical sensation, movement, emotions, and mentalization demonstrate increased activity. This means that, in a very real sense, individuals experience stories, thereby generating improved engagement, empathy, personalization, and motivation. And furthermore, this experience actually enhances memory, with individuals demonstrating up to 60% better retention of facts when they're embedded within a story than when they're presented in isolation. In the classroom, students across all age levels and subjects have demonstrated improved learning and memory when concepts are embedded within relevant stories, ranging from children studying math and literacy all the way up to adults learning proper healthcare practices. Furthermore, a survey of university students demonstrated overwhelming support for the use of stories during lectures, as they're seen to increase engagement, enjoyment, and conceptualization of broader topics. Classroom Applications So we've seen that using relevant stories to present facts can improve engagement, learning, and memory. So how can we use this in the classroom? One idea is when exploring didactic or otherwise difficult facts, try to determine and present the background story of why and or how said facts were derived. Knowing the history behind an idea will help students contextualize and personalize potentially dry material. Another idea is to introduce stories from your own life that are relevant to the content being explored, or ask students to present relevant stories from their own lives. In this way, you can enhance engagement with the material and inspire deeper consideration and personalization of relevant topics. Finally, you may want to consider asking students to construct a fictional story around a set of related facts. Doing this can improve memory for the facts and help students uncover similarities and or differences between relevant concepts. Ideas and Future Directions When considering how best to implement stories within a lesson, a number of questions arise. For instance, what makes some stories more powerful or memorable than others? What are the components of an effective story, and can those components be leveraged for the classroom? In addition, which types of stories best fit which types of facts? For instance, do uh, historical stories work well for all concepts, or does that better match only certain types of concepts? Some important questions definitely worth exploring. On behalf of everyone here at the Science of Learning Research Center, thanks for watching.